Last time we were talking about running water and today we are going to continue our discussion about running water. So last time we talked about the distribution of earth water. Okay, we talked about uh, we talked about this point and also we have discussed the hydrologic cycle. Okay, also this important point we talked about the evaporation, precipitation, talk about infiltration, talk about we talked about the runoff. And also we discussed the uh, how the um, uh, river and the stream how it's going to be formed. We say that runoff will start as sheet flow, then it will be rails, the rails join to uh, form the gullies and the gullets joined to form rocks, creeks, or stream. And we talk about we talked about the uh, drainage basin. So uh, we uh, the definition of the drainage basin is the area where the stream can absorb the water. Okay, it looked like that. And uh, we said that also the uh, we have something called uh, drainage divide, and the drainage divide it could split. A continent into different uh, drainage basins and also we discussed the uh, uh, three zones of the river we say that we have the zone of sediment we have zone of transportation and we have zone of deposition in the zone of sediments the erosion will take place here uh, either from the uh, breakdown of the bedrock or from bank erosion or it could be from scouring of the uh, bedrock of the channel and then the sediments it will be uh, carried through the trunk stream here and then the uh, energy of the stream is going to decrease and as a result it will deposit the sediments here and we we do need to remember the only the, the fine sediments it will go to an ocean so I think last time we stopped here at that point today we will continue and build on on new ideas regarding running water uh, it's very it's very important to know the drainage systems so the drainage it has a system and that system is interconnected networks of stream and it can exhibit or it can shows uh, a variety of patterns so we know that if we have a stream then we need to have tributaries or branches to feed the stream with water okay so the the, the, the the way that the stream join with the uh, branches it has some uh, some um, kind of uh, patterns so the, the common drainage patterns we have dendritic dendritic which is the most common one this one looks like tree branches with a lot of twigs so if you are going to look here, the first pattern, which is the uh, most common one, here we have a stream, and we say that uh, uh, we need to have tributaries or branches, which is uh, the purpose of it is to feed the main stream with water. Uh, in the first pattern here, the branches or the tributaries look like trees with a lot of twigs so this one look like tree branches with a lot of twigs the uh, second type which is the radial pattern this one look like radial because the uh, the stream it will start off from a central point like volcano so the stream will start from here so the tributaries will look like that the third pattern, which is the rectangular pattern. So in this one, the tributaries 
look like a right angle bend in order to join the main stream. We call this rectangular rectangular pattern. The last one, which is a trellis pattern, this one is similar to rectangular pattern, but the tributaries are in parallel to each other. So this one, similar to that one, except that the branches, the branches here, are parallel to each other. So we have four common uh, drainage patterns. We have dendritic, the most common one. Again, it looks like branch trees with a lot of twigs. We have the radials in case a stream starts from uh, a central peak like volcano. And the rectangular, which is exhibits many right angles, bends. And the last one, the trellis, it looks like the rectangular drainage. But tributary uh, streams are nearly parallel to one another. Okay. So, and we move to the next slide. The, the the pictures is going to be more illustrated for you. Okay. So, any other questions before we move on? Okay. So, we know that in order for the stream to move from one point to another we need to have influence of gravity. So water moves in a river channel under the influence of gravity to move from one point to another. And we are going to classify the flow into two types. We have the laminar flow. In that case, the water yeah. moves slowly, slowly in a, a straight path. When the water moves slowly in a straight path, we call the flow laminar. The other type, the water moves quickly in erratic fashions, which means that the water is going to move in horizontal and vertical movement. We call this turbulent flow. So the flow either to be laminar or to be uh, turbulent. So here we have the, the, the water move slowly in uh, straight path you it's feel like the water is not moving but actually the water is moving slowly and we call this laminar flow on the other hand here uh, the water move quickly and in erratic motions which mean that the, the water is going to move in horizontal and vertical movement and we call this uh, turbulent flow so either to have laminar flow or turbulent uh, also, it's very important to talk about the flow velocity. Of course, if you have a stream, that means the water is going to move with velocity. And we need to know the factors that affecting the flow velocity. The, the factor number one, of course, is going to be the slope or the gradient. So it makes sense if the uh, gradient or the slope is steeper, that means the velocity, will it going to be increase or decrease? If you have increase, increase. What's the meaning of the gradient? You don't know the gradient or the slope? Uh, no. So oh, okay, you, okay. Have, you have a stream from point A to point B. In order for the water to move from point A to point B, you need to have vertical distance and horizontal distance. Okay, so if, if they move from point A to point B, mainly uh, we have like a horizontal distance and we don't, and we have a small, uh, if we have a small vertical distance, that means we have gentle slope. And if we have uh, horizontal distance, and also we have a large vertical distance. In that case, the slope is going to be steep. Okay. So the steeper gradient has more gravitational energy to drive channel flow. So if we have gentle uh, slope or gradient, that means the velocity is going to decrease. On the other hand, if we have steeper gradient, the velocity will increase. 
Also, it depends on channel shape. So, we have something called wetted parameter. So, I'm going to explain this with picture. The wetted parameter is the area where the river is in contact with the channel. And if we are going to look in that picture here, the wetted parameter, uh, we need to look into the area that is in contact with the uh, stream. So assume the uh, width here is 10 units and the uh, depth here is 1 unit. In that case, if I want to calculate the parameter, so it's going to be 1 plus 10 plus 1. So this one is a parameter is in contact with the river. If we are going to look to another picture here, the width is 5 units, while the depth is 2 units. So, in that case, the weighted parameter is going to be how much? 5 plus 2 plus 2. 9. So, it's, it's going nine. to be nine. 9. So, nine. here, the uh, weighted parameter is 12, because I have 1 plus 10 plus 1 equal 12, while the weighted parameter here is 2 plus 5 plus Okay, and also you can calculate the cross-sectional area. So if this, if the depth is 1 and the width is 10, then the area is going to equal how much? 10. 10. It's equal 10. What about this case? The depth also is 2. 10. It's also, 10. It also is 10. So even though the, the area... Is yes, the shape is different and the area... Is the same, but the weighted parameter is different. Doctor? Yes. Okay. Yani then, uh, let me just finish my point. Okay. I will give you okay. room for questions. Okay. So, okay. so I have, even though the area here and the area here is the same, but the weighted, uh, but, but the weighted parameter is different. The weighted parameter for the first one is 12, while the weighted parameter for the second one is 9. Okay. So, also, we need to know the ratio, ratio between the uh, cross-sectional area and the ratio uh, between the cross-sectional area and the weighted parameter. So, if you calculated the ratio between the cross-sectional area and the weighted parameter, in that case here, the second picture, you will find the ratio is more than the first one. And through that ratio, we are going to say if the ratio is more, that means the velocity is going to decrease, okay, even though the cross-sectional area is the same. So why the, why the, uh, the ratio, if the ratio is more, why we do have an uh, increase in velocity? So uh, the, the most efficient channel has a small weighted parameter compared to its cross-sectional cross area. The reason for that if you have a narrow, deep channel, this means that they has, which has a small weighted parameter. That means the the frictional drag is going to be less, and the flow is going to be more efficiently. Okay, so in this case here, since the weighted parameter is small, that means the friction between the water and the uh, surrounded area or the surrounding soil is going to be less. So if I have less frictional drag, that means the flow is going to be uh, higher flow. Okay? So, yes? Uh, okay, so In so. the first one, it will be uh, slower because there is more friction, yes? You mean this one, right? You had Sora. Yes, because I have, yes, more friction, the velocity is going to be slower, yes. That's the whole point. Okay. So let's Hello. move on. Do you hear me? Yes, Hello. doctor. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's move to the next yes. point. Yes. So yes. also, the factors affecting the flow velocity, we have the channel size and the roughness. Like we just mentioned, 
the water depth affects frictional resistance. So maximum flow velocity occurs when a stream, uh, when the, when a stream is bankful. Bankful means that, of course, if you have a stream, then you have a certain level for water. The water, the level of water, it could be minimum or it could be maximum. When the stream is bankful, that means the le level of water is maximum. Okay. So if the level of water is maximum, that means the depth it will increase. Okay. So we know that water depths affect the frictional resistance. So it's better to have maximum depth. If you have maximum depth, that means the velocity is going to increase as well. Also, the roughness. If the bedrock is, is rough, that means it will create turbulence and that is going to decrease the velocity. Okay, so if the bedrock is rough, that means you will have more frictional resistance, which means that the velocity is going to decrease. Okay, so also we have something called discharge. Okay, maybe the uh, term discharge for you is new. So I'm going to explain this in uh, by giving you an example. So if you, all of you, they, you have tap inside your house. Okay the tap through which you can receive water. So if you open a uh, tap, okay, if you open a tap inside your house, water will go through it, right? Then if you want to uh, know the discharge from your tap, in that case, you are going to put a pan through which you can collect the water from the tap, okay? Uh, you are going to open the, the tap, let's say for one minute. Okay, of course, during one minute, you are going to get a volume of water inside your pan. Then close the tap after one minute, then calculate the volume of the water inside your pan, and then divide the uh, volume of the water divided by the time, which is one minute. Then you will have units like cubic meter per second. Okay, so this one is the unit of the uh, discharge. So discharge means the volume of water flowing past a certain point in a given unit of time. In other words, it's how much water you have during a certain time. We call this discharge. Okay, so when discharge increases, the width, the depth, and the, and the flow velocity increases predictably. Okay, is that point clear for you? The channel, the effect of the channel size, roughness, and the, the effect of the discharge? Yes, Dr. Clear. So let's move on. So also, uh, it's worth to mention that it's very important to monitor the stream flow. So monitoring stream flow is very important. And in U.S., geological survey measures flow velocity. Also, they are going to measure uh, discharge and the river stage. We say river stage. It means height of water service relative to a fixed point. So we are going to have like 7,500 devices in order to measure the flow, velocity, discharge, and river uh, stage. And you can see here, you have huge numbers, uh, devices in order to make measurements. Why do you think uh, this one is, is important process? Why they have a lot of numbers uh, of devices in order to measure the uh, flow, velocity, discharge, and river stage? Uh, to know if the river is going to overflow or is it, there is not enough water in it, maybe for agriculture and like natural disasters and stuff like that. Yes, excellent, excellent. Yes, you need to know whether you have overflow or you have underflow. If you have underflow, you of course if you have underflow, you may find uh, drought. 
and we don't want to get drought, right? And if you have overflow, you are going to find flooding, and we don't want to get flooding. Also, in some streams, we build dams, and also we need to know the uh, amount of water that is going to be stored. In order to have uh, one uh, terms for that, we are going to say these devices is important in order to manage the water resources. We know that water is a valuable resources for humanity. And in order to take care of it, we need to uh, monitor it. We need to make a proper management for the water. So these data are useful for resource management. And the next picture here, you see we have a lot of dots here in the United States of America. All of these dots represents, or all of these dots represent the 7,500 uh, devices in order to uh, gather data. And like you can see, the dots here, it comes with colors. We have red and something between red and yellow. You have green. We have also this one, blue, blue again, and we have black. Okay, so the colors indicates that whether the river or the stream is above or below the normal. Okay, so we have a lot of devices here in order to monitor the uh, streams, the, le the level of the streams. Okay. Also, as you can see here, we have uh, cable towers, two cable towers, and we have car table here, uh, car cable. Uh, and here we have device, like you can see, we have like a rope here. And the rope here is connected with propeller. Propeller is like, a, uh, you know, the fan, something like uh, the fan, okay? So a propeller is going to rotate, and as a result, the uh, propeller it is uh, the propeller through the prop uh, propeller we are going to measure the velocity and also here we have stilling well if we are going to magnify this one we are going to see uh, a well here which is connected with a pipe uh, with the river here we are going to do this one in order to uh, know the level of the stream okay so here we have a float in order to uh, show us the level of the stream. And the float is connected with the recorder, record the level, and the recorder is connected with satellite antenna. So the satellite antenna, we are going to receive the data for, from the river. So we are going to put uh, these devices uh, in or around the country in order to monitor the rivers and the streams. Like we just, like we, we mentioned before, it's very important to manage the uh, resources, the water resources inside our country. Okay, so any other, any questions regarding this? Okay, if it's clear, we are going to move to the next page. Also, uh, we are going to monitor the streams and it's very important to have something called uh, longitudinal profile. Longitudinal profile means that we are going to have cross-sectional cross view of the stream. So if this one is a stream, here is the uh, longitudinal profile. In the longitudinal profile, in the x-axis, we'll have the distance. The distance from the head to the mouth. Uh, we call it head or head water. Uh, the head is the source of the stream. So here we have the, uh, the source of the stream, and here we have the mouth. The mouth is a point where the stream is going to empty the, uh, the, the, the flow into ocean or into a larger uh, stream, okay? So it's all start with the head, and it's going to be finished with the mouth, okay? Here we have the distance, and here we have the elevation, okay? We know that the elevation and the distance is going to form the gradient or the slope. So uh, that uh, portion here, since we have 
uh, change uh, in the, the distance and a large change in the elevation, it means the slope here is going to be steeper. And here, since we have uh, distance with a small change in elevation, it means that we have gentle, uh, gentler uh, gradient or gentler uh, slope. Okay, so uh, here is a picture for the longitudinal profile. It shows the uh, horizontal distance and the vertical distance. And this one is a longitudinal profile for that stream here. So uh, longitudinal profile is a cross-sectional view of the stream. We have the head or the headwater, which is the source of the stream. We have the mouth, uh, which is the downstream point or where the stream empties into a large body of water like ocean. And if you haven't noticed, uh, we have the, the longitudinal profile, it looks like a curve, but this curve is concave shape. So the curve, it could be that or it could be like that. And if it's like that, we call this concave shape. And we have also we can mon monitor the properties uh, that affecting the velocity. We can uh, monitor the, uh, uh, the measurements or the factors through the longitudinal profile or example here. Here we have the headwater and we have the mouth, the headwater and the mouth. So if you are going from the headwater toward the mouth, the, the mouth, if you are going to talk, to talk about the discharge, the discharge, discharge is going to increase, increase from the headwaters toward the mouth. Okay. While the uh, channel size also is going to increase as well and the flow velocity is going to increase as well. So the discharge will increase, the channel size it will increase, and the flow velocity it will increase, as long as you are moving from the headwaters towards the mouth. While the channel roughness is going to decrease, which means that the channel roughness here is high. As long as I go down, the channel roughness it will decrease. And Another thing which also is going to be decreased is the channel slope or the gradient. We know that the uh, channel slope here is steeper and the channel slope here is gentler. So it means that the channel slope is going to decrease moving from the headwaters toward the mouth. So through the longitudinal profile, we can see the interaction between the longitudinal profile and with the a characteristics of the stream. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to finish here. Uh, Doctor, this picture summarizes everything about the stream. Doctor. Okay, make sure make sure that you understand this well. Okay, so now I will open the floor.